Welcome to another episode of us guys. Uh, if you haven't checked out the exterior of our boat tour, there's a link in the up top or in the description below. This week we are covering the interior. So let me give you a guided tour of what Lady Africa is inside and our battery systems, our engines, etc, etc. Welcome to Sailing Lady Africa. I'm Ricky and this is my wife Simone. After two years of hard work on our boat, she's finally ready to take us from South Africa across the Atlantic to the Bahamas. Be sure to join in our adventures by subscribing down below. So let's start in the aft cabins. We'll start on our port side and show you what's there. So here's our aft cabin, it's one of our rooms. At the moment uh, we took the mattress out just to show you guys where our engines are and I'll give over to Ricky to explain our engines to you. Come closer peeps, you ready for this? If I can get it open. I haven't put the handle on here yet. But ta -da! And for those of you that have been following the channel, you guys know the channel. Um, you you'd know that we didn't initially have insulation, we've put it in, it made a huge difference. You sleep on these beds like a baby. So that's our engine, it's a Vitas 27 horsepower sail drive system. Very, very nice, so, so far we've been happy with it. It's also coming up for its first service, so if you guys wanna see how we service our engines, make sure you press that subscribe button, and it's gonna be in one of the upcoming episodes real soon. In the back there, what we've got in this engine bay, is a battery to start the engine it's a dedicated start battery the exhaust system which is going up there flows out the side and some extra oil we've got about 10 liters of extra oil in here the cool thing about this engine is the gearbox and this engine use the exact same oil what i know i never knew that but all the other ones i've worked on usually always have a transmission oil some kind of transmission oil a sae 80 or something like that this engine specifies the exact same engine oil for the gearbox which yeah, surprising. It's a bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus. So we need to carry one kind of oil that I think the guys really went and thought about that nicely because it works fantastic. There's a bilge pump in here which is dedicated to this compartment. This compartment can also flood completely by itself and we wouldn't spill over because we are above the water line, this top layer here, and all the ports are sealed. So none of the water, if this had to flood for some reason, it couldn't flow to the rest of the boat. It's almost like a separate compartment in within itself. We've got a dual stage filtering system so we've got a water water separator and filter here and we've got another water and separator filter on the engines and it both filters do the same thing so it's just double filtration and then we've got a very fine particle filter that's on the pump that feeds the the engine and so far it's been working great it's also got a shut off valve that we can shut off the system from the tanks and that's about it so right in the back there, there's a little compartment, but it's literally just where our rudder is bolted onto the hull. One day maybe we might change that design, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of it, but it works pretty well and it's working right now. Over here is where we store all our, so there's hydraulic fittings, plumbing fittings, electrical fittings, electrical cable, pieces and all of that kind of stuff all stays in here and that's what we use this compartment for. Here is literally where our diesel tanks are installed. So our diesel tanks are there and you literally just look and you can see the levels about halfway at the moment on these tanks. We've been motoring around a lot with family coming to visit and all of that. It's a little short little harbor trips running in and out and you want to go explore the areas. So we have been using a little bit of diesel while they were here. But yeah, that's with the diesel tanks, 150 liters per side. So this is dedicated to this engine and the other one's dedicated to the other engine. Come into these top little shells is the gauges for the engines and I also use it to store some cable ties in there. More storage over here. Just put some stuff in there. Um, over here we have, someone puts the blankets and the towels for the guests for whenever they come and they maybe they get a little colder. This would probably only be applicable for South Africa because once we get out of here we're hoping for warm weather all the time. But who knows. Some towels for them and this can also turn into closet space for them. When the bed is made. Yeah, when the bed's made. <laughs> Uh, the linen goes onto the bed and then obviously they got the space. Over here we got an unfinished project. This is our water maker control system, uh, power supply, uh, AC to DC and over here we have a dual stage filter system which I'm going to change to clear filters for the water maker. 
Make sure you subscribe to check that video out, it's still coming. We've got to install it, um, but we're waiting for lockdown to be over so we can get some parts. And over here, if you can see, okay, minus the filter, minus the portable shower, there's the water maker, there's the pump, and this is where we're going to install it. So it's a nice convenient little space. I've cleared up the little bit, the piping, so it can fit in here quite nicely. I'm just going to move that pump to the side and fit in all these filters. Down over here, we just have a little bit more storage, but I think what's something better is to show you this. And that's a bilge with the water with one of the through holes and that through hole we're going to use to supply the water maker and when we built the boat we replaced every single through hole with commercial with uh, dairy grade stainless steel fittings so it's really really good quality stainless steel fittings and hopefully they'll last a couple of years so that's our port aft now we're going to show you our galley it's super spacious i think it's one of my favorite parts about this boat we keep all the good stuff the snacks food, the tea, the coffee, you name it goes here. Um, we have tons of storage which is also very nice. So I'll show you guys all the space and storage that we have here. So mm -hmm. over here we got our medicine boxes, we got tons of medicine and bandages and you name it. We have our cereal, we have our fresh water pump for the port side so that we can wash our dishes and all the water supply for the port side. Yeah, all water supply but Oh, and the water supply for our um, deck wash. All right, so here we have our water tanks. We have a total of 600 liters. On this side, we have 300 liters. So there, there's a water tank. We're not running low, so all's good. So how we fill up our tanks is we can either connect it up if we're in a marina like we are at the moment, we can connect it up to the hose pipe and then it runs through a water connection that fills up our water tanks from here. And then if we are not, we use our water maker which is a desalination plant that makes salt water to fresh water. And then what that is, is it fills up our water tanks. So that's how we have water on this boat. Over here we have our fridge. It's a 220 volt fridge. Um, yes, there might be lots of comments about how a 12 volt fridge would have been better, but I'll leave Ricky to reply to all those comments. So over here we got 110 liters of fridge storage space. We don't have much in there right now. Um, we probably need to do grocery run. But we have our sauces and anything that needs to go in the fridge. And we have a freezer on top here as well. At the moment we just have ice lollies or ice whatever, I don't know, ice lollies that we, what we call them. And uh, so you can, you have freezer space in here as well, which we will most likely use when we start the crossing because we need freezer space more than fridge space. Over here, it's our drawers that we made. We have our plates and appliances, toasters, blenders, all that stuff in here. Cleaning stuff, more cleaning stuff, and our sewing machine is in here as well. And then we have our Smev oven, which we only actually recently started using um, once we started sailing. But it's really nifty and that you just open it up. We've made our first bread, we've made pizza, we've made muffins, we've made roast chicken in here. It's pretty nifty, I like it. And then we keep our pots and everything in the bottom over here. Pots, pans and a few mixing bowls and whatnot. Over here we have spices and containers to store leftover food. Not that there ever is leftover food because Ricky gets to it before I do. And then here's the snack cupboard. So we've got all our snacks in here. We've got our rice, our... What are you <laughs> the rice that only snacks we've got. <laughs> we've only got rice and snacks. No snacks and then we've got our tinned food and rice, pasta all the stuff in here as well and the two hatches below me this is also part of our um, water tank so it's another inspection hatch for our water tank it's a little one there and then here is to the bilge to monitor if everything's good underneath here we have our microwave it is awesome to have and we're able to have a microwave because we have such an amazing battery system so it's nice to have this bad boy because it's always nice to have warm food. And like I said earlier, we have a toaster and a 
blender which is super nice to run um, because of our battery systems. Here we got our little bin. It's tiny but it holds all the stuff that we need and then we wrap it up, put it in a black bag, a trash bag, whatever you guys call it, and store it outside until we get into the next port to throw it away. We got our double sink. When you're at anchor, it is nice to have this um, because then you can just pop your dishes here and it can air dry and you don't have to dry it. As opposed to when you're saving, you have to dry everything and pack it away in case you want everything flying everywhere. Then we got a little magnetic knife holder over here. Everyone's been asking, do our knives actually stay in place? And they do. They, they haven't moved once, not even like sideways, let alone falling off. So it's really cool. Over here we have our stove. Show you. Two burner. It's pretty nice. Um, if I had to get an upgrade, I would probably get a three burner. Just so that there's more space. Not that you'll use the three. It's just nice to have that extra space because if you have two pans here, it doesn't fit. And then our fruit bowl. We're going to get a fruit net. Um, we just, everything's closed so we can't go by the net or whatever. Yeah, we also haven't been able to find one really. No, we haven't been, well in PE you couldn't find one. Yeah. Um, but now we're in Cape Town we probably can get one. Maybe we'll hang one up outside? What do you yeah. think? We will, I've, I've read a lot of people say you should hang it up outside and then there's some people that say hang it inside. So if you know where you need to hang up, where it's the best to hang up your fruit and veggies, Leave a comment below so that I can figure out where I'm going to hang this thing because people say inside it starts to drip and then it drips on your floor and stuff if you forget about it and there's a, a rotten apple or potato or whatever that's in your your net. So let me know. Now follow me. Ford Ford cabin and uh, this is... This is Ricky's cabin. Yeah, this is Ricky's cabin. Why it's Ricky's cabin is because all Ricky's clothes are inside. <laughs> Not that he sleeps here. <laughs> The most important thing in Ricky's cabin. Yeah, he's got his, his fishing reel and fishing, fishing lures equipment. and all fishing stuff. And then it's his clothes and then occasional boat stuff shoved in between Drones. everything. You have cupboard storage at the back. Port off bed was a single bed, three quarter bed. Um, at, up front here we have a double bed, which is nice. And then behind the headboard we have more space so at this moment it's Ricky's hats and his toiletries and then this side is linen and the shade covers for our windows and then so over here is also our build area we're so inspection out to our build what Ricky does is he stores his fishing rods under here so it's a nice easy way to grab them and it's out of the way as well so we don't have to have fishing rods everywhere. Although I think if it was Ricky's choice, he'd have fishing rods everywhere. Now we're gonna go to the starboard side of the boat and I'll show you that side. All right, so this is our starboard aft cabin. It's identical, well, semi, semi-identical to the one on the other side, but the cabinets are obviously a little bit different. Um, this is how the bed looks with a mattress on it at the moment. And it looks small, but let's see if we can fit both of us on it. So these cabins do seem, the aft cabins do seem a little tight. I don't see why you can't fit two people here quite comfortable. If, if Simone gets rid of those cushions and she moves all the way that way. See? A lot of space. So it's pretty much, you could count this boat as four double cabins, depending on the size of the people. So let's show you the rest of the cabin, see what, what's everything. Uh, I'm going to give over to Ricky to explain where our batteries go. So right over here, I know it's in a little bit of a mess at the moment and the reason for that is we're waiting for our other battery that's going to come in here and then these cables are going to get rerun. Um, those are comms cables over there, these are power cables, but coming to the main thing. This is two batteries that are 160 amp hours each. Uh, they blue Nova lithiums and they are freaking amazing. This pretty much keeps our boat powered up. So on this side, it's exactly the same as the other side. This hatch over here, we just open it and check up what our fuel level is. The room's got a USB plug-in, like right over here. Underneath here, we use it for some extra storage. Underneath this bed is also the second engine on the boat and it's got its independent battery and 
oil storage and all of that underneath this bunk. Um, again, same linen towels. Over here we put keep all the spares for the engine, so extra filters, extra uh, water pump, uh, impeller, diesel filters, every, all of the kind of parts, we keep it in this one. This is our only long cabin that we got, uh, cabinet that we got and we use it to store the brooms, mops, all of those kind of stuff, cleaning stuff. Here's some more small storage. Uh, this is where actually the control box comes in from the throttle controls and but we do use it for some storage of some small fluids and stuff like that here's access into the electrical system so all the cables and that meet up and they come into here over here we have our freezer it's also 120 liters um also uh, 220 volts here we have our washing machine so what we did is uh, it's a top loader i think it's a 7 kg top loader so i need to do washing but we have our washing in here and then the lid goes on top and you can switch it on and everything and then we have another lid that closes up to make it one solid surface in the back here we have our water heater and this is this is like the magic right yeah how good is the water here it is so nice to have hot showers all the time water, all the time every day it's Whenever great you want. And uh, also to wash dishes, it's nice if we need to have hot water for oily pans or pots or whatever. Um, it's also a five liter, it has a five liter flow rate and it uses minimal gas. So between our heater, our stove and our oven, we use a nine kilogram uh, gas cylinder and that lasts us about four months. Sometimes even five, maybe even six depending on how sparingly we use it. So here's our gas shut off and our water shut off. Underneath here by the stair, which is identical to the other side, which also has a little hatch underneath here, is in this one we store our power tools. Then that side we store all our hand tools like screwdrivers, all that stuff. Here we got our fire extinguisher close to our heater in case anything has to happen. It's easy accessible. We also have a fire extinguisher this side by our stay and a fire extinguisher that side by our stay. So pretty much this side is identical to the, that side. We have our starboard water tank this side, also 300 liters and it runs alongside this side of the hull. And then yeah, we do the same thing. We can fill it up here the same way we do that side. Or we can just fill that side of the tank up and then just use our transfer pump which is the same pump that we use to wash our dishes. We transfer it by that pump to the side of the tank. Coming into our passage, there's extra storage. What we have here is we add, we have our camera gear. So we have lots of storage. Um, we just keep all our locks, keys, stationery, more camera gear and books and everything goes this side. So at this stage, I'm in the head. Um, it's pretty spacious for the size boat that we have. We have our toilet, our Vita's toilet, electrical toilet. So what you do is just press this button once or twice, depending what you're doing on the toilet. Our sink, we have our fresh water pump that supplies our starboard side of the boat over here and all the plumbing that needs to go for the head. It is our shower. It is also one of our favorite places on the boat. It's super spacious and what you do is you just close the curtain and no water spills anywhere but inside, yeah. And you got your our shower head. We can shower. Over here we're gonna put our holding tank once lockdown is over and we can go get it the specific size for over here. Here's our starboard side. We got same storage there. We've got my sunglasses, up dainty, our clothes, cosmetics, more cosmetics, <laughs> and then this is our outside of the bed where we sleep. And then we also have a fan that keeps us cool in the hot days. Not that it's hot here in South Africa at the moment. So under this floorboard is the through hole transducer for our speed and depth and it's also my spear guns that are over there on this smaller one over here is the little shower bulge pump that's in there 
and pretty much all the water out of the shower and the basin goes in here and then gets pumped overboard we're probably also going to add it into our black water tank if we want to and then that will pump into there no water will go overboard so from over here we've got our light switches that do all the lighting control over here there's another one on that side raymarine vhf with ais um, sound system for the boat and just the mmsi number placard information over here is our ac panel so 230 volts 50 hertz ac panel all the ac on the whole boat on the entire boat is controlled from here we can shut it down start it up and then they all, each one has its plug also so if i shut down the main everything just goes off and that's like part of our emergency procedure so this is our color control and it's an amazing piece of equipment it pretty much gives us all the information of our batteries our inverter system our dc drawers everything comes into here you've got one place where you can monitor everything and over here is pretty much how we change the the parameters of our mppts which is our solar chargers um, we can also switch it off and switch it on from here but this is if i if i'm lying in bed or wherever i am around the boat i just turn on my bluetooth i connect to my solar system and i can see exactly what state the batteries are in in the back of the first area so this is space where the where the secondary AIS is coming in. So this is our backup autopilot control unit. Our DC system is here. It's just a DC control panel. And we've got main autopilot control unit behind there. Coming into, and this is not finished yet, this is our new buff boost, which is a, which allows us to charge from our alternator safely. Uh, the Victron buff boost DC to DC converters. Um, one is for the port side engine, one's for the starboard side engine, and that ensures that we don't overheat our alternators charging lithium. We balance the voltage that's going into them, and we can program to how much current we want to draw out of the alternators. So here is one of the big systems that make uh, running 220 volt fridges and so much 220 volt appliances on the boat is a really good inverter. This is a multi plus compact. I freaking love this thing it's probably other than the lithiums this is like one of my favorite things on the boat it's super it doesn't draw power unless something is drawing power so if a fridge as you know a fridge comes on and then goes off when it goes off so does the inverter so the inverter is not permanently drawing power out of your batteries and this is the only way to make a 220 volt or 230 volt system efficient a big thanks to our patrons for that one um, this is a huge present from from an electrical engineer patron of ours and that was amazing still a few cables that we need to tidy up here but this is pretty much our raymarine system and the reason why the cables haven't all been tied up we're hooking up our, we're busy hooking up our second autopilot um, into the system so once all of that's done then we'll tidy up the cables and that'll be the end of the install and hopefully once the back boosts are done that'll be the completion we tidy up all the cables at once and it'll be finished right underneath here we've got a bit of um, a bit more storage space i kind of just keep my diving mask in here a knife uh, and a couple of basic stuff that's really close easy to grab and over here is where we keep our harnesses and all our uh, life jackets over here we have our eperb a uh, waterproof flashlight and a backup vhf system um, during the long passages we might actually just take all of this off and put it into a ditch bag and have that ditch bag ready to go over here is a lovely to-do list and um, we stick this up here and as we sailing or whatever and there's things that we feel that need to be added we add but this is our before departure to-do list so this is our saloon this is my workspace and my play space that's all i've been doing for those last time that we spent in lockdown is we've been catching up on youtube channels that we love we enjoy watching some hunting some fishing a four seater at the table but you could fit six people as like a hangout space but really comfortable four seater yeah, yeah we've yeah. had like six people sitting here no problem eat six people sit eight yeah yeah you could eat six people sit eight comfy for a quick snooze i've taken many naps here before what you can do is you can pop this table down and then you can make one big Christmas bed as they call it. So stay tuned till next week when we bring out these bad boys. And if you're wondering what these bad boys are, it's every single receipt that we have received from purchasing items for this boat since our boat built. This is what has made us 
broke. Talk about what we could have done, what we should have done, what we wish we'd done. Yeah. And all this stuff. All and the mistakes we did. Is it worth did. it? Is it not worth it? Stay tuned till next week. And don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. Cheers. Cheers. If you would like to support our videos, you can do so by sharing it with your friends or join our Patreon family. The link is in the description below.